And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everyone, Ryan Metzler here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a top 10 game, number 4 in fact, and we're going to be taking a look at Agricola by Uwe Rosenberg. This is the first game in the Harvest Trilogy, uh, a series of games about farming, and it'll play up to five players for about a half an hour per player. It's a worker placement game in which you're trying to earn the most points by developing your farm and covering several different aspects of developing that farm, uh, and whoever does so the best is going to win. So, now that I've given you a brief overview of what it's about, I'm going to give you a real quick overview of how the game plays rather than my usual rules overview, and then I'll go into a summary of what I think about it. So as I mentioned, Agricola is a game about farming, and each player will be running their own farm, represented by a player board, much like this one right here. On this board you'll see several spaces, and these are going to be the plots on your farm. Also you will see two houses, or two rooms of a house. These are wooden rooms, and they'll be upgradable to either clay or stone rooms in order to earn more points. Um, you'll be building houses, fences, uh, plowing fields, and planting crops on this board in order to earn points. Each player will also start with two workers, which are represented by these wooden round discs. Uh, these are going to be what you're going to use to place onto the board to take actions in order to gather goods, uh, to build buildings, to make improvements, and to do other things such as take animals or build fences, which are represented by little sticks. Each player will also get a bunch of cards. They're going to have both minor improvement cards and occupation cards. And these are going to be cards that will allow them to kind of personalize the way they play the game. The occupations will offer bonuses depending on which deck you use uh, to either collecting different types of goods or performing different types of actions throughout the game. And oftentimes the improvements also modify gameplay either in end game scoring or in the way that actions are taken. Now that we've looked at what each player will have individually, why don't we take a look at what's going to be done on the main action board. So this is the main action board of Agricola. You'll see here that there are several different boards that can be split apart and they're stored easily. Uh, and then on them there is a series of cards. But the first two boards, the furthest left boards, I have some actions pre-printed on them. And players are going to be placing their, their workers from their personal boards onto these actions in order to take them. Each action will only be available once per round, so once a player has placed on it, that action can't be taken by any other player. Also on the board, you'll see that there are several blank spaces, here off to the furthest left. These are available for customization of the game for more or less players. For two players, these spaces aren't used, but you can see that there are cards available that for three players you place down to add additional actions, and those are available for four and five players as well. Each turn, players are going to do several things. The first thing they're going to do is stock the resource spaces on the board. And if we take a look, you can see that there are resource bases pre-printed. There's resources for wood, clay, reed, and fish. And so each turn, they're going to add the amount of resources indicated to those spots, which will be available for taking through use of an action. So they would add three wood, a clay, a reed, and one food. After this, they're going to flip the next available card for a round, which in this case would be the Stage 1, Round 1 through 4 card. And they're going to flip this over, and it would have one sheep on it. And they would stock that with the one sheep for the round, much like the other spaces. Then players would take turns placing their workers onto actions and taking those actions. And these actions may be various things. As you've seen, they could simply place onto an action to collect resources. For example, to take this clay and place it on their board. Other things they might want to do, for example, is to place onto the plow one field action. And this would allow them to place a field on the board in order to plant something there in the future in order to get more goods. Additionally, they can take an action, for example, to take the start player action. That way they would be the first player to go in a future round and would be able to take an action before anyone else had the chance to take it. So several of these actions are going to be important for gathering goods, for getting food, for playing those cards that I showed you earlier, uh, for building more rooms in their houses, for example, uh, let's say they had to build another room, this would be a bad example because they could only build wooden rooms, but to just show an example, they would expand their house as such, um, and basically just to try and build up their farm by gathering resources and building more cards. Uh, at the end of a turn, players are going to take all of their workers back and place them back onto the board. 
After they've done so, they're going to start the next round. And again, they would stock up the resources. So they'd add more wood, and you'll see that this, these resources will build up if no one takes them. They'd add another clay, which now only has one because it was taken previously, another reed, and some more food, and then they would flip the next card. And so you'll see as the game goes on, there are more and more choices available. Now we have the ability to play one major or minor improvements. Minor improvements are those cards I showed you in your hand, while major improvements are on a separate board. And most of these are ways in order to turn goods, such as grain or vegetables, which uh, are represented by yellow tokens and orange tokens respectively, into food or to turn cattle, sheep, or boars into food as well. Uh, this is a way to feed your workers, which is going to be the import important at the end of stages. So as the game goes on, you'll be placing your workers, getting more and more actions available, restocking those spots, so we would flip this for the next round. Uh, now you can sow stuff into fields, so if we had that field on our board, and we happen to have a grain, we could take that grain and put it on a field, and get, putting that grain there would make us more grain, so we would have more grain available. And at the end of certain rounds, you'll see here, at the end of round four, there is what's called a harvest. And harvests are important for several reasons. First, because you'll be able to harvest goods from your fields. So you, I said we planted that grain here. For every field that we have something planted in, we're going to harvest. And we take one of the goods and put them in our personal supply. And this is a way to earn more goods, which is going to be important for both feeding your people, building buildings and stuff, and earning endgame points. After you've harvested all of your goods, you're going to have to feed all of your workers. And each worker you have, which you'll be able to earn more later in the game, is going to need two food, unless it was built or obtained on the previous turn, in which case it's only going to need one, but that's a small exception. They're going to need two food. And if you can't feed them, you're going to end up with begging cards, which are going to give you negative points at the end of the game. Not a good idea, so you want to be able to feed your workers. After that, any animals you may have obtained, let's say for example you had some sheep that you fenced in on your farm, building fences with an action that will show up. If you have at least two sheep, you would be able to breed those sheep, multiplying into a third sheep. Now, each space can only hold two sheep, so I would have to take this sheep and put it in my house, and I'm allowed to have one animal in my house as a pet. Im unimportant, but you get the idea. First you're going to harvest, then you're going to feed, and then your animals will reproduce, which can be used for food or points at the end of the game. This is going to continue with players taking actions, flipping new cards, and then when they get to the end of each round, or in the end of each phase, harvesting until the end of the game. And you'll see that these harvest phases accelerate. At first it's four rounds until a harvest, then it's three, then two, then two, then two, then one. And so more and more frequently you're going to have to feed your workers while trying to build up your farm in order to earn points. Scoring is going to be done at the end of the game only, and you're going to score points for several different things. If you have very few of something, you're going to get negative points, and the more you have of each thing, you're going to get more points. Fields are going to be areas that are plowed on your board, and the more you have, the more points you're going to get. Pastures will be fenced in areas. Again, the more you have, the more points you're going to get. Grain is a good that you can plant and harvest. The more you have, the more points you get, up to eight. Vegetables are the same. Sheep, boar, and cattle you will be breeding and holding in your pastures, and they will score multiple points. Very important. Uh, and then at the end of the game, you're also going to get negative points and positive points for several different aspects spatially on your farm. Uh, you'll get negative points for each space you don't use on your board. You will get one point for each fenced-in stable, which is our little building that doubles the uh, area of a pasture so it can hold, hold more animals. Uh, and for each clay hut room that you have, so you'll be able to upgrade the rooms in your house from wood to clay and clay to stone. Uh, you'll get two points per stone house room, so even better if you manage to get to stone. And you'll get three points per family member that you have, so for each worker you have, you'll get three points. And so you'll see it's important to balance out your building throughout the game. To get a decent number of fields, pastures, grains, vegetables, sheep, boar, cattle, and workers, and to build up your house. And throughout the game, you're going to feel like this is very difficult. So, whoever manages to do this the best throughout the game will end with the most points and will be the winner. So that's Agricola. Uh, a real short overview. I know it's not my usual full rules explanation of a game, 
but it's not really possible with this game because there's so many different actions that vary each time. Uh, there will be the same actions, but they'll appear in a different order. Uh, it's a very nice, very tight worker placement game, and it always gives you that feeling that you just can't do everything you want to do. It's not possible. Now, you can try and balance everything, and you're going to have to very much base your actions based off of what everyone else does, because you can't take the same action as someone else on the same turn. So maybe one turn someone will take a worker, and you'll have to work around that, because maybe you wanted the worker, but you'll have to do something else in order to prepare for the future to take that worker later. So the game offers a nice single-player uh, alternative. It offers nice scalability for uh, two, three, four, and five players as well, uh, and also offers beginner, advanced, interactive, and all types of different variants based on different cards that you can use. There have been numerable expansions for the game that change the experience, keeping it fresh, uh, and all around this is a very well developed, very well done worker placement game that belongs in any serious Eurogamers collection. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Sommer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.